What power supply should you get for your new gaming PC? Well, this is a question that I get asked a fair bit, and that's why I'm including it in this week's Tech FAQ. If you want to be a part of future Tech FAQs, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at TechTeamGB, as I ask these questions and get viewer answers too. Let's take a look. So the question of which power supplies you get is always decided by what the hardware you have inside your system is. If you haven't seen the video that I released fairly recently on the real world power draw for GPUs, you should definitely check that out as it gives you a rough idea of, depending on what hardware you pick, will depend on what uh, power supply you need to go with. As a general rule, if you're going for a relatively high-end graphics card, something like a 650 watt power supply is probably going to be a nice sweet spot for you in terms of potential upgradability and in terms of uh, kind of real world usage and how much power it's actually going to draw from the wall. When I say high-end graphics card, right now I'm talking about something like a 1080 Ti or a Vega 64 with uh, even stuff like a 1080 really not requiring much more than a 500 watt power supply, although it may depend on what connections power supply has available to it. Uh, to actually you know, power the graphics card as some power supplies, especially in the cheaper range, may not necessarily have the full uh, you know, double eight pin connection that you'll need for at least one of those graphics cards. Of course, if you're running multiple graphics cards in SLI or Crossfire, you'll likely need a higher wattage power supply, something in the 750 watt or more category. And of course, depending on what CPU you have as well, will also depend on uh, what power supply you need. If you're getting something like an Intel 8400 or even an 8700K, or anything like a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7, you're likely not going to need much more than a standard kind of level power supply. So again, uh, a 1080i, a 650 watt power supply will be perfectly fine for you. But if you're going with an Intel X299 platform like Skylake X, or if you're going with AMD's Threadripper, then you might want to go with a slightly higher wattage power supply if you're going to be stressing the CPU and the GPU at the same time. It's also important to note the power supply's efficiency. So if it's an 80 plus bronze unit, that means that it's not too much more efficient than 80%, whereas if you're looking at an 80 plus uh, platinum power supply, for example, that means that it's uh, upwards of 90%, if not 95% efficient. So uh, it will also depend on kind of that uh, metric as well, depending on how much wattage your system will draw versus how much uh, the power supply will lose in conversion. Now, as with all tech FAQ videos, I'm including your viewer answers as well. I asked you on Twitter what power supply you have in your system and generally what power supplies you'd recommend for, uh, the, so I guess, an average gaming build. Nathan or Lysine uh, jumped in with, he's currently rocking a 750 watt power supply from EVGA. Uh, can't seeing him needing bigger in the future. He has a 6800K and a EVGA 1080i. So even on the X99 platform, you really don't need too much. Warwick has an incredible system with a Zenith Extreme and a Threadripper 1950X. Also two 1080 Ti EVGA uh, for the win cards with two custom water cooling loops uh, in three 960E. Evos? Jeez, that's that's kind of crazy. Anyway, um, he has a thousand watts or one kilowatt power supply to go with it, and that kind of makes sense, especially with a Threadripper and two 1080 Ti's and a lot of included peripherals as well. It's probably worth having, at the very least, that sort of redundancy. Ashley has a 650 watt Corsair power supply with a Ryzen 3 1300X at 4 gigahertz with a 1060 6 gig. This seems like uh, probably a little bit overkill in terms of power supply. Although, again, if you do plan on, I suppose, with a 1060, you can't. But if you were to up upgrade your graphics card or perhaps run a couple of uh, that sort of class of graphics card, then you're likely going to need uh, that sort of wattage. But for that point, uh, you're probably all right. Matt says he's got a 1050 watt power supply, which is probably a little bit overkill for his system. 3770K, 16 gigs of RAM, RAID 0 SSD, and a Vega 64. But he originally bought the system with an R9 295X2, which is a cross-fired graphics card uh, and does draw a lot of power. So I can understand why he would have uh, gone with that configuration. But again, as he probably says, uh, it's you know a little bit overkill for his current configuration. And Kev from ClickTech UK, who makes some awesome tech videos, you should definitely check him out, has a CX650M power supply for his 6700K GTX 1080 rig, which is, yeah, pretty, pretty uh, reasonable of a, a wattage for your system. So I think at the end of the day, it comes down to if you do want to spend a little bit more and get a power supply that is relatively overkill for your build, that's fine because it then leaves you room for upgradability. It also leaves you room for the, the components in the power supply to degrade over time and obviously uh, produce less or I guess just get less efficient in producing 
reducing uh, wattage from AC to DC watts. Um, so uh, it's probably okay. Uh, you're, you could end up spending more money than you kind of should on your power supply and therefore uh, less money on the rest of the system. But generally speaking, power supplies are the things that stay in your system for the longest time and you generally don't upgrade. Even if you upgrade your entire rest of your system, you often don't upgrade the power supply. So it's probably good to just go all out on a nice power supply rather than going for one that specifically just meets your exact wattage needs and no more right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What power supply do you have in your system and what system do you have and what power supply do you recommend for a specific set of uh, builds? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you want to be part of this tech FAQ series make sure to follow me on Twitter. When I ask these questions you can reply to them in good time and, and be in the perhaps next video. Um, that is pretty much it. As I said if you want to check out more tech FAQ videos or anything else there will be some others over here for you. If you want to support this channel and help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday and now Saturday for this series basis then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link in the description down below or the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links which also massively helped me out. If you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and otherwise thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.